Hey everybody, it's Lord Magicus. Uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to start out the new year with uh, a new frame for this. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, see how this works out. Uh, so my screen's going to be a little bit less cluttered now. So we just yeah have the bar at the bottom and then I'll be up here in the corner. So I think this will this will be good because it'll make this uh, play window a lot bigger so everybody can enjoy the match a little bit better. So we'll try it. We'll see if this works out. I have high hopes for it. I think that it'll look nicer going forward. So we'll see how it is. Um, all right. So yeah, we're going to start out with uh, playing uh, Mono Blue Merfolk and Legacy. Uh, I have a 1K coming up on Saturday. So I need to get some testing in. And every once in a while, you should go back even if you're going to play like, you know, blue green for some re or for whatever reason, like I'm comfortable with blue green merfolk, but I think that it's important to every now and then just to get a baseline feel of like what does the stock list feel like. So like if we're going to play blue green, we should at least have some idea of what does mono blue feel like playing. So we're going to look at this um you know, 20 lands, but we're going to play 3 meter vaults and 2 fairy conclaves. That sort of a concession to Plague Engineer still being somewhat of a thing. But I think this is fine. You could play Waterlog Groves in this slot and it's also probably okay. Um, since we're we're only having uh, the four Aether Vials and four Curse Catchers, the Conclaves are kind of like extra one drops. So we can play them on turn one where we don't have anything else going on. And it's then it sort of gives us a curve of like ten one drops. So I think that's okay. Uh, it, it is a flyer, so it can block Merit Lodge, which is useful, and having flying means it can attack over pretty huge board states with things like uh, Knight of the Reliquary, for instance. So, we'll see. I think this card is fine. Um, I don't know if I'd want to play more than two in a list like this. You'd have to... I mean, you definitely could, but you'd have to um, probably play less of these brown mana, maybe cut like caverns or more muta vaults or something. I don't know. I, I'm comfortable with this setup for this mana base right now, so we'll just try it like this. We don't want to deviate too much from what's normal for this. Because like I said, the, the idea is we want to get a baseline feel for what mono blue is like at the moment since we've been playing a lot of blue-green. Which means, uh, yeah, we have to have Silver Gill back in the deck because Silver Gill is one of the things that makes mono blue what it is. Um, I think this card's fine. We're still going to play with the two Repeals and two Brazen Borrowers. This will help us against Merit Lodge and stuff like Delver. Uh, other than that, I think this is pretty basic. Um, sideboard is actually, I think, exactly like the same as what my green list is. So the Vencers against like Omnitel, you know, Force of Negation helps against Reanimator and Storm, and also like the Echo Vion's deck, like any of that stuff. Um, this member, uh, yeah, we bring it in against like Monastery Mentor, Creature Decks, stuff like Knight of the Reliquary. Uh, we want Fairy Macabre for Reanimator, obviously. And you could play Surgical in this slot, but I'm going to try re um, try the Macabre against it because it's a little bit better against Exhum. And it also doesn't have anti synergy with Chalice in one. Surgical is a little bit better if you expect to go up against like Punishing Fire decks, but I think that I'm just going to try this and see how it goes. So against like lands, like this is not going to be quite as good, but maybe we just still have to do this anyway. Uh, three Graft Diggers Cage, um, again, Reanimator is a thing, but also it's good against Hogak, so we need something against that deck because that deck just will roll us otherwise. And the two Null Rods, um, yeah, they're good against um, Bomberman. The Echo of Eons combo, and also um, the Epic Storm, because they're using so much artifact mana right now, like Mox Opal and Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond. I think they even have um, is it Hope of Gear appears in the deck. So there's a lot going on in that. So Null Rod will be very good against them. And you can also bring it in against like Death and Taxes, turn off their swords and, all, and um, their Aether Vials can be very uh, strong there, so I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, well, let's just take it and uh, see how we do with it. Alright, let's go. League. Uh, 
yeah, make sure that we have the right deck here. Okay, let's go. Jumping in. <laughs> You'll probably play some more Pioneer either next league or the one after that will be Pioneer. Because I'm interested in jamming some more leagues with Gadwick. Alright. Let's do this. Feels good to go back to the classics every now and then. You don't need to have everything be innovative. Sometimes what's old is what's good. Well, we are on the play. All right. Um, this list seems. All right, this seems fine. We can get our chalice out, and yeah, we have Silvergill and the true name. This should be pretty good. Repeal will be very strong if they play like Delver of Secrets. This just lets us bounce it back and draw another card. So it'll unflip Delver. They have to take another turn just playing it again and setting up a flip with it. If we play Chalice on one, though, we can't repeal Chalice back to our hand because Chalice on one will counter this. So that's worth noting. Chalice on one means you cannot repeal something that costs zero. Now, if you put Chalice on zero, you can repeal it back, but. Okay, well, we're just stuck here waiting for opponent, so... I don't know, maybe the cat just, like, knocked the keyboard over, I don't know, something. There's, there could just be, like, a drink that spilled everywhere. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're trying to look up to see what we're doing. Alright, in Mulligan, so... Maybe it's just a really, really hard to decide hands as to what they're going to do. Mold to six. All right, so it's fine. Plain, so maybe death and taxes. So we'll find out shortly. So we take swords to plowshares offline before we deploy stuff like silver kill. I think that's important. You play like Thalia. Stoneforge missing. Alright, that's not good. I'm probably gonna get Sword of Fire, nice. And another thing, or we yeah, if they get batter skull, we can't actually repeal the uh, token. I could rep I could actually bounce the Stoneforge back to his hand. Uh, I don't think I need to do that just yet. Let's play uh, True Name Nemesis before anything bad happens. Before they draw like Wasteland and blow up the Muta Vault. But we also have the option now where we can totally repeal Stoneforge Mystic back to their, their hand when they try to equip it. So now it's got to choose. All right, do you're gonna are you gonna deploy the sword of fire and ice, or do you want to keep this up? If we draw another land, like yeah, we could act even repeal the sword of fire and ice in combat. Eat it, eat Stoneforge that way. And we still have trickster. Okay, so wastelands online, so they can kill the Muta Vault now. Makes sense. Uh, I think what we have a few options here. Um, I might wait till their turn to see if they try to like equip Stoneforge Mystic with it. They're not going to hit us. 
because we also have the option of uh, using Merfolk Trickster. Mm-hmm. It puts a batter skull out. That's interesting. So we can actually just trickster that thing down. Yeah, let's not let that hit us. They can't, yeah, they can't realistically port us, or otherwise they turn this off. Um. So what are our choices here? Um, hmm. They can put Sword of Fire Dice in play this turn, and then they can equip it to this, and which well, we won't be able to block it anyway. So I think in that case it might just make sense to attack. Yep. We put the sword in play. There's not really anything we can do about it right now. The best we can hope for is they try to equip the Stoneforge with it, but they almost certainly want to put it on the germ token. I think at the end of their turn we're still going to repeal the Stoneforge. So I already got the two equipments that they have in their main deck. So yeah, this is the death and taxes, they usually only play two different things. Can't do anything about that. Actually, I could repeal the Merfolk Trickster back to my hand. I like that plan, actually. They don't get to draw a card because their target didn't... Yeah, they didn't resolve that. Unfortunately, we drew Curse Catcher, which doesn't really help us right now, but... Yeah, this is a problem, like... I don't have a good way to deal with this. Sure. Since I know we have that in hand, we may as well play it. So we have to try to draw more cards. We can't, we can't win the game with just three mana. That might help. This can't block, so it may as well attack. But this is tough. Uh, we can get Brazen Borrower and maybe like bounce uh, Sword of Fire and Ice at a critical point. Like That could help. Almost certainly this silver girl is getting shocked. I don't really have anything going on though. 
They're hitting us for six with the life link, which is definitely making us lose the race. I think them, like, top decking the batter skull is what really is killing us. Like, we could probably beat the sword of fire and ice, but, like, not both of these things. It's tough. I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't think you have anything left to search for, so I don't think it matters, but. Sometimes they play a third, like, or they could have the GTA, I guess. Yeah, all right. No, I guess, like, yeah, sometimes sometimes I do play all three in the main, like, some of them only play two of the three, and which two it is sometimes depends, but I think because of the, they have all of the equipment now, we're kind of boned. I don't think we can come back from this. They can just stick the GTA and the germ token. <clears throat> I mean, we may as well use the mana to cast something. No, we're definitely losing this, though, to... Death and Taxes, when they have Stoneforge Mystic on turn two, is hard, but, like, when they have, like, two of the equipments, like, right away, then it just becomes, like, super hard mode. If it was just the sword, we probably could have had a chance at this, but not the sword and the Batter Skull. It's too much. We've got some stuff to sideboard in, though. These Curse Catchers are pretty pathetic against this deck. Yeah. It's interesting that they didn't want to put the GTA in play. Yeah, we're just dead anyway. I guess it didn't matter. Yeah, because we couldn't block it, so we're just, we're just kind of screwed. Alright, well, Death and Taxes is not a matchup where we really want to be seeing this, but we do what we got to do. Chalice is not particularly great against them. Uh, it's okay, but not like fantastic. I think Venser is a little bit better. It, is, it does turn off stuff like Mother of Runes, Aether Vial, and like Swords of Plowshares, but they also play Chalice in their deck, so it's not that big a deal. And I think the rest of these cards are all better. Uh, I could take out one Aether Vial, actually, because of the Null Rods. That, that seems fine. We'll just we'll run three Chalice and three Aether Vials, just because we did bring in the Null Rods for the equipment. I mean, we had a pretty good start with, like, True Name, but... The repeals were not super great versus this uh, this deck, especially because of the batter skull. Like that just became a problem. And chances are they probably had a bunch of stuff like swords to plowshares in their hand, so we needed the chalice in one. I'm guessing, but it also prevented us from being able to bounce the germ token, which that happens sometimes. But that's. It's the cost of doing business, because the repeal is uh, better against stuff like Merit Lodge. What's funny is if they actually would have played Thalia, then I think we could have played the repeal and it would have actually been okay. I would love to play first. Nope, not with that hand. Okay, well, we just lose, I guess. <laughs> so we're not keeping this either. I guess we keep this and. Jeez, what do we do here? We have to put two cards in the bottom, so I guess that and. Aether Vial. If they like Wasteland us, we are so fucked. Yeah, there it comes. 
I guess they have to decide, are they going to wasteland us now, or do they want to just play Aether Vial first? Okay, sure. Yeah, let's just bounce that now, before we get wastelanded out of the game. Yep. Now they'll probably blow up the Conclave. This played another vial. Interesting. Alright. Um, actually... I don't really need to do any of this right now. I can just play Brazen Borrower. It seems better because if yeah, if even if they wasteland us, like we can, I want to play the borrower while I still have the ability to do so. Because they can't violin Thalia. So if we want to dismember something, we still can. All right, now we're gonna do this. He might have swords, and if he does, then so be it. Like this is like we're on a mold of five. Like we're there. That's it's already just super tough. We don't have anything like hex drinker that can just get out of this either. Oh look, we're gonna get wastelanded again, aren't we? Yeah. Like this is just super over. Still have four cards in hand. Files ticking up, like we have no mana to cast these spells. Um Yeah, I'm not bothering. Nope, we're dead. Like we're gonna fall too far behind on that. That's fine. I'm not bothered. We could possibly still win that game, but like it's pretty low percent and I don't feel like spending the time trying to do it. This Chances are it's not going to happen, so they can just stick a vial on two and three and like still be able to put everything into play and there's nothing we can really do about it. But I mean like that just, that happens. You mold a five and against a deck like Death and Taxes, like you're going to die. They can easily one for one you and then just win with like Stoneforge Mystic and it's not a problem at all. So, yeah, it sucks. I, that is a match where I think, like, the blue-green deck is a little bit better. Um, just because, like, if you can get a Hex Drinker out and give it protection from instance, like, that is already huge, and Oko is also ridiculously good in that match, too, so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, Taxes is just, it, it's a deck that Mono Blue is going to struggle with a little bit more. Sometimes you'll get there if you just jam like multiple true name nemesis, but other th without that, like you can't. It's just really, really hard. All right, let's go. All right, while well, we are on the play, let's do this. It sounds okay. It's not great. I am not a huge fan of this hand, but, I mean, you could theoretically, like, mulligan this, too. I don't know, that's hard. I, this kind of counts like two cards, though, so maybe it's fine. Come on, opponent. It should not take this long to figure this out. I guess he's a format where everybody's supposed to know what their decks do and whether, like, you should... 
should be able to just look at it, a deck and know if you can keep it. There we go. Yeah, know if you can keep your hand. The best thing that could happen is if they like force this or like abrupt decay this thing. Blooded Strand, so it's either it could be Miracles or Stone Blade. It's not exactly where I want to be. We have enough mana sources already, I don't really need this. Okay, so this could be like sneak and show, I guess. It could also be like that stupid five color planeswalker deck. Have like royal scions in it. I don't know. They haven't. Yeah, this looks like sneak and show, and I think they're going to go for it. I mean, it could be Storm, maybe. What the hell is going on here? Ponder, okay. There's definitely combo of some sort, and they're playing the Lotus Petal because they're afraid of Chalice and Zero. Alright, I guess, are you going for it? It is show and tell, okay. Well, this curse catcher is gonna look really good right now. Because their force of will is not gonna do shit. So what do I want here? Um, I, it's hard to say. There's not a whole lot that's going to help right now. Actually, I'm going to put it on Rogue. Just in case I want to put the fairy into play. They can't counter it then. This also works with True Name Nemesis. Uh, yeah, I guess. Alright, that's fine. F6. They had Omniscience, so yeah, that sucks. It's been a long time since we played against this deck. Our hand kind of sucked against this, to be honest, so... Now they just have to find it. I guess I should actually go... If I get to the end of the turn, I want to vile this Lord of Atlantis in, but... I don't know. I, I assume that they had force of will, but we didn't really have another choice except but to try and do it, so. I guess they didn't find anything, so they just have like a bunch of lands left in hand. Um yes and um sure. I guess we'll just name Merfolk with that one. It's not good because again, like top decking a ponder is already just fantastic. 
what would they draw? Like lotus petals or something? That's not getting cast. I might just repeal Lord of Atlantis just to put it back into play so I can cycle this for a card. Well, that's good. If they just continue to top deck lands for like at least one more turn, we could theoretically do this. All right, if we can draw a Lord, like, we actually can kill them next turn. Just hold up Aether Vial. Just pretend like we have Force of Will. If they find Emrakal, we're dead, though, so... Now, that's a good sign. They can't crack that. I don't think they really want to, but... All right, come on. Lord for the win. I guess I'm going to play this Aether Vial just in case they find Emrakal, so that way I can have more permanents left on board. Alright, so this is their last turn. They have to find something or they die. <clears throat> uh, okay, they just killed themselves with Ancient Tomb. Alright, well, we beat Omniscience through against all odds. Uh, that was fantastic. They just played Omniscience, but then they cantripped and did not find anything. Alright, well, Repeal is going to be very bad in this matchup. Um, honestly, Brazen Borrower is not very good here either, and neither is, like, Trinium Nemesis. Um, yeah, the Null Rod doesn't really do anything. Like, it turns off Lotus Petals, basically, but I don't think that's good enough. Uh, Brazen Borrower, I guess, could bounce, like, a sneak attack, or, well, I, I guess it can bounce, like, Gristlebrand if it attacks, so, cut the true names. Can also block Emrakul, so that's worth noting. I guess we just run it like this. It's force and Venser. That's pretty much all we got, so... This is a match where I don't really think like either of the decks like particularly has a huge advantage. Like Silvergill drawing more cards is sort of fine, but also like Hexdrinker and Oko are putting threats in the play are sort of fine. Like Hexdrinker is actually pretty strong because it's something they can't pyroblast off of the board. And it gets really big really fast, so it comes in on turn one, which is nice. Uh, this is okay. I think we're going to try to stick this Chalice on zero. Okay. Unless they play like a Lotus Petal right away. Well, we can't actually counter anything, so... I guess I'm just going to play this on zero. If Vent yeah, like, Venser is fine here. Curse Catcher's not doing shit. Um, it's probably getting pitched to Force. Well, no, probably not, actually, because they can just play... Um, yeah, they can just go for 
if they can find another mana. Visagio is really strong. But I feel pretty safe with Venser in hand, so... If I find another Chalice, I will stick it on one. This just keeps them from going off this turn. Well, that's pretty good. Like, I don't think we're casting this Force of Negation, but just in case for some reason that happens, we need to keep it. Okay. Go ahead and draw seven cards. See how that works out. You can't draw seven more because you'll just die. Uh, do we have them dead? I have them pretty close. That's going to be three, three, not quite. I think if we draw a lord, we might. So that's six. We can put eight. So if we draw another lord, actually, we could kill them this turn. Which means they're almost definitely going to go for Omniscience next turn if they have it. Yeah, Lotus Petal, Spell Pierce, they look pretty poor. Alright, Lord wins. Um, it's not a Lord, but... I mean, this still might be good enough. Because this also means now they can't use Beseju. It mean, yeah, so Force of Negation is online, and actually Curse Catcher is online too. They can't pay two life for it, so I think they might just be dead. Yeah, alright, well, we beat Show and Tell. Um, Venser showing that it did what it's supposed to do. We play Silver Guild all? I don't remember if we did so or not. I don't know. It's usually a pretty good match for us, but like we got kind of lucky with the first one, so. Or the first game, I should say. Alright. Uh we are on the play again. Three times in a row. That's surprising. This is okay. We'll keep it. If, I mean, if they want to force the will of fucking Curse Catcher, that's fine, so. <laughs> I'm not going to expose Cavern of Souls on a Curse Catcher, because I don't want him to wasteland us so he can't play Lord. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to send him back to the Stone Age. <clears throat> uh, I don't think there's any chance where it... Probably not attacking with this next turn. I think we just want to play Lord of Atlantis. They really want to brainstorm here, so... I guess... What land do I play? It might actually be correct to play Mutavault. I think it is. Alright. We might have Wasteland, but if they do, that's fine. Attack. I think they're not blocking, so... Alright. Repeal it. 
And if they counter it, I can just use Curse Catcher to counter it. Back to the Stone Age. Yeah, next turn we play Lord, play Land, and then turn afterwards we play the other Lord, and then we can attack Mutavolt and Lord. Yep. You want to force this? That's fine. Not really concerned about that. They revealed Force of Will on top, so now I think we might play the Cavern of Souls. We might see Lightning Bolt. No? Alright, that's good. That means that we are definitely super winning here. Yeah. What do they have? Just like a bunch, bunch of nonsense in their hands? They had nothing else to do for one mana, so... That's surprising. Maybe like Stifles? They did exile a Stifle, so... This is Grixis Delver, that's surprising. Thought Seize is not going to hit anything, good. so good job. That, I don't know if that was a good attack. It doesn't seem like it. Okay, well, Munivolt. <sighs> Attack. You hit me for three, I'm hitting you for five. And I'm also playing True Name Nemesis because life is awesome. And I mean, now we have four creatures on board, like, I don't know what hope they could possibly have here. And we can just F6 because they know what we have in hand. Yeah, there we go. We just... So we're playing against Grex's Delver, and we just, like, nut-stomped them. Repeal sent them back to the Stone Age. That was nice. All right. So I think we want Dismember. Honestly, like, most of these cards are pretty good against their deck. Not really much I want to take out. I think the Repeals are fine. We need the Borrowers, because they probably have Gurmog Anglers in their deck. <clears throat> I guess maybe like a vial and the chalices are good. I think I'm going to take out a vial and a curse catcher. Vial is fine, but like it's also sort of an attrition based match sometimes. And if they're playing Grixis, they probably have Culligan's Command, so I don't want to give them the chance to blow up vial and like a creature. And this is kind of weak. I guess I'm going to keep it, though. I'm not excited to keep this, but I think we have to. Yeah. Not what I really wanted to see. Alright. How good are you at magic cards? Oh, fantastic. Just blind flip that Delver. All right, you're going to be really good at magic cards because you're just going to... You are 100% flipping this nonsense next turn. They shuffled, huh? That's that's surprising. All right, we need something here. 
That's not bad. So they do kind of have to counter it. Or now they're brainstorm. So they have effectively three cards in the end, maybe less. Next turn, we can put out two lords. We're we're definitely getting attacked for a lot with these. We need like Merfolk tricksters. Force a will in hand. That sucks. I don't know if I can actually do this. Like, I guess I have to hope they don't force this, but they almost definitely will because you have brainstorm to pitch to it. And yeah. Um, I guess we just pass. I don't. I don't think we are winning because they had they flipped two delvers in like the first two turns. So it's, and this hand was not particularly strong against them. Yeah, wasteland doesn't really do anything. All right, you got it. That's enough for me. Your hand was incredibly good, and mine was incredibly not. I don't think I really want to change much here. I guess Venser could be okay. I don't know. I don't think I need it that badly. I think our deck is absolutely fine against it. We just need to like not draw like shit. Uh, this is okay. We can keep this. <clears throat> um, I really want to keep my vial. Because I think if I have Vile, like, Delver is not killing me. Play this. I don't really want to run creatures out just yet. Sure, Brainstorm. We can even attack with Conclave next turn. So it doesn't look like there's a lightning bolt. That's good, so. Surprised by that. I just don't have anything. That's that's interesting. So I think I'm probably going to put Lord of Atlantis out. I want to keep the trickster for something a little bit juicier. I'm going to put Lord out and attack with that in Conclave. Brainstorm, fetch immediately. I don't know why you're fetching immediately. You could wait. Uh, I guess if you're playing Ponder now. like Last turn, I'm not sure why they did it right away. Maybe they just wanted to scare me, but... I don't know. Desperately looking for something. But I think Delver at this point doesn't do much. That's fine. Ooh, interesting. Alright. Let's see if we can bounce this first.
Maybe they have multiple dazes. Nope. Okay. Well, we can race it still pretty easily, though. We also have the awesome line of a uh, repealing trickster and then just tapping it down again. Or we can also just attack them for, what is it, 7 damage, so if they attack. That doesn't really do anything. You can Fatal Push, okay, it's fine. Only has two cards in hand. This is getting tight, though. We're going to need more than this trickster to race this Gurmog Angler for sure. Red Horde Arcanist, I am not happy to see that. Uh, so Dread Horde Arcanist is gonna attack and fatal push this stupid fucking trickster. Which means I have to, like, hold on to this Force of Will for it. Attacking doesn't really do anything here. I think we're actually losing this because we are just drawing lands and this isn't working out. Especially with Lightning Bolt, I think we're fucked. Uh, yeah, that's gonna do it. There's no, there is absolutely no way that we can beat this. We lose. All right. Well, Grixis Delver beat us. I think this is another match where Hex Drinker could have helped us a lot because you make it like a four-four with protection from instance, and like that's another card like Churning that they can't really race. It's it just and, and it threatens to become a six-six. So the Gurmog Angler like was definitely better than the repeal for that. So uh, that sucks. Well. Grixis Delver is like a match where I think we have a pretty good match against it, but our draws did not line up very well against that, so. I think if we had True Name, we could have won. Alright, well, we are on the play for the fourth time in a row. Well, let's see if it matters. Oh, this hand is pretty bad, actually, but I think I have to still keep this. And we're going to lead on Mutavault Vault because I want to keep the Curse Catcher in hand in case I need to force something. Plus, this also denies them information since we don't really need to tell them that we're a Force of Will deck. Polluted Delta, that's fine. Tropical Island. Yep, okay. So this could be Bant. This could also just be um, a Delver deck. Could be Storm. Okay, well, we still don't really need to tell them anything. <clears throat> we could look like Goblins or um, maybe Death and Taxes. We also now have the option of filing in Curse Catcher to counter something. This looks, yes, yeah, Snow Control. Defense Grid, okay. So this definitely is uh, the Epic Storm. 
So force... No, my god! I Why did I not do that? If force a will is going to cost extra mana, um... That was a huge mistake. Um... Damn it. I guess... Can't really do anything else here. Like, I have to hold up force will now. Because this is definitely Storm. Like, Storm is playing defense grids in the main deck. Yeah. And Force of Will, unfortunately, is just going to cost uh, an extra three mana to play it on their turn. Next turn, we can actually start to attack with the Mutavaults again. Yep. This is a match where Null Rod is definitely coming in against this deck. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, just that this this is a really good card against us, so. If they play fucking Veil of Summer, like, we have no choice but to counter it. I cannot let that resolve. There's no way. Yeah, Burning Wish will just kill us, for sure. All we can do is just attack and hope that they don't have another burning wish. So they're fetching before before they draw. Okay. Makes sense. So I think they probably have to do something this turn. Because we're threatening to just, like, vile in a lord and kill them, so they probably are going to go for something if they have the option to. Yeah. Ball Ritual, yep, they're just doing it. Nine mana, like this effectively it means nothing. Tendrils of Agony. Oh, this is just for value. Okay, so they don't actually have the kill here. Oh, they no, they have passed in flames. Okay, they can go do it like this. Now they they got it. And we couldn't counter it because of Veil of Summer anyway. Yeah, they ha they have it here. Never mind. Their their last card was Infernal Tutor. So, so that's interesting. They're still playing Infernal Tutor in this deck. They don't actually have the wish. It's not the new version of the deck. That's good to know. So, but we are still going to bring in Force, and I think. Venser's actually still good because of uh, Infernal Tutor. Uh, Repeal is pretty bad. Like, in True Name, Nemesis is also very bad. Brazen Barwer is also similarly not particularly good. Yeah, this version of this deck is a lot harder now because Veil vale of Summer fucking sucks. <laughs> Seriously, whoever invent like whoever designed Veil vale of Summer should not be working for Wizards of the Coast anymore. I'm sorry, that card is a disgusting disgrace to this game, and anybody who thought that would be okay to put in this game like does not deserve to work at, at this company. Like, 
It is a one mana cryptic command that like is just a fucking awful design. It does nothing healthy for the format at all. Honestly, I hate the design of Veil of Summer even more than I hate Oko. Like, it's way more egregious. It's it's more egregious to me than Hogak was. Like, how how do you design Veil of Summer? That card is just it I can't imagine like what thought process goes into that to make it seem like that's an okay thing to do. If I can get Chalice on two, then that will probably just lock them out. Okay, they just gave up in the face of Curse Catcher and then two Chalices. All right. But no, the problem is this match is like super, super, super heavily dependent on Chalice now because if you can't stick Chalice in one, you have to force every single Veil of Summer or you just like are going to die. That's all there is to it. It's, it is insane. I cannot believe that anybody would... Uh, why would you put Veil of Summer like in a set like that? It's just utterly disgusting. Autumn's Veil is already a fine magic card and... It, it's about as strong as that effect needs to be. I just, I don't get it. Uh, we're going to keep this hand. It's a little bit weird, but... Yeah, I am I have to keep it. We're just going to hope to draw another land. And we're going to try to stick this chalice on one. I'm going to go... Um, okay. Yeah, just play it now. You mulligan? Yeah. He mulled to six, okay. They could just go for it this turn if they have everything, but um, if we get to go to our turn and we stick Chalice, then I think we have a good chance. Is again, Chalice and One turns off Veil of Summer, which means then they have to rely on like Burning Wishing from the sideboard usually. I don't remember. Some of them might have Abrupt Decay still. So yeah, we're just racing to see, can we kill them before they find an answer to Chalice? So it looks like they're setting up for Abrupt Decay off the top, like that's what they're looking for. Um, yeesh. Okay. Um, I guess Nullrod is just going to send him back to the Stone Age. That might be a concession there. Because now LED and Lotus Petal are both offline.
If I draw another land, like, I'm not even... I don't even think I play it. Or, I'm sorry, I don't think I attack with Meadowball. I think I just hold up Force of Will. You can't. You're... You cannot actually kill my Null Rod because of your own stupid uh, defense grid. You have to wait until your turn. You did this to yourself! Yeah, okay. So you're at eight. I don't understand what do you what do you do here? You like Looks like maybe this could just be tendrils for value. Burning wish. Um I, I can't really do anything about that. They still have two black mana. Echo of Ams, alright. Yeah, it's... I have two black left still. I, again, can't really do anything about it. I still can't force anything, so... But now I have forces back online, so that's worth noting. Uh, I could attack for five. I don't think that's enough, though. I think I just attack for three, and then I threaten to kill them next turn. All right, well, we got there. That was hard, but Null Rod did its job. That was great. Uh, and, yeah, they kind of screwed themselves with the defense grid, and they made them have to abrupticate on their own turn, so that was good. Whew. All right, well, yeah, Storm has become a lot rougher, because they don't even bother with discard spells now. Like, Epic Storm just has totally trashed, like, Duress and Thoughtseize in favor of Veil of Summer. And the Veil of Summer is a super scary card, so... Alright, let's see if we can turn this League positive. That would be nice. One more to go. I would love to be on the play. We won... The, did we win the die roll every single time? That's incredible. I guess I'm gonna keep this. It's not super amazing, but... It's got Chalice and Force to back it up, so... This is another scenario where, like, this Muta Vault's going to keep us from casting this, but I don't think we even... Oh, fuck that. Alright, that's bad. That's really, really bad. Okay, so, um... I think we need to stick this Chalice out first. Because I think that they play like brainstorms and stuff in their deck. I'm not a hundred. I forget exactly what the cloud post list looks like. This could also be like Eldrazi or like a version of that. In any case, I don't think the chalices are going to be particularly good. You know, I probably should have played the Muta Vault instead of the Island. That was a mistake. So, I mean, I need to keep this in hand for Force of Will, but... What the hell? You just conceded? Okay, well, I... Maybe... He did, did not even, like, attempt to win the... Like, okay, he just gave up the match. Well... He's playing Cloud... Like, Cloud Post, I thought, is supposed to have a pretty good matchup versus Merfolk, so maybe... I don't know, like... I have no idea what... 
version of that deck maybe is like playing the Echo of Aeons thing or something with just Cloud Coast lands in it. And I, who knows? Like, that's insane. You just concede the entire match because you just see, like, Merfolk? All right, well, I mean, that's fine. You want to tilt and give me free points and chests, I'll take them. Um, all right, well, I mean, this list did okay. I think that Mono Blue is still fine, but I don't know. Personally, I'm still more comfortable playing the Blue Green list, and I think that definitely versus Death and Taxes, the Blue Green list could have had a little bit more game to it. I mean, Hex Drinker being like a 4-4 pretty easily against that deck, also not being a blue creature is pretty significant too. Um, it, it, and you sometimes, like I think our last match against Death and Taxes when we were playing uh, blue-green, we actually got it up to be like a 6-6 six -six with pro everything, and that ended up winning the game for us. So, I mean, it can just absolutely crush them. So I think that's fine. And then uh, what was the other match that we lost? Oh, against Delver. I mean, I think both of these versions of the decks are fine against Delver. Um, yeah, it, it's just going to get close. Like, I don't really like Silvergill Adept that much against Dreadhorde Arcanist. I think this card is pretty poor against it, so I'm totally fine with, you know, having a, ver a deck that has better stuff like Hex Drinker and Oko's in favor of the Silvergills against that. So I think that I'm, I'm still probably going to play Blue-Green for this weekend's coming up. I, I, mono, there's nothing wrong with mono blue. I just, I personally like, you know, having a little bit stronger cards. Like, Silvergill is more of a synergy card in this deck, but when you're playing like Hex Drinker and Oko, they're, they're more individually strong cards. So I like playing decks that have more of those. Um, the repeals were okay. Like, we saw, we saw a little bit of play out of these. Uh, we really want them versus, the Merit Lodge decks, and we didn't play against any of those this time, but it, it still it still was okay. I don't think that there's anything particularly wrong with this card. As the only the only thing is like I don't want to go four of on like Brazen Borrower specifically because a deck like say uh, what the hell is it Mono Red Prison if they stick Chalice on two, you actually won't be able to bounce it with this, and then you get locked out of the game like that. Whereas if you have a mix of Repeal and Borrower. Like, this actually helps against when your opponent tries to chalice into you so that you can't, like, bounce and snaring bridge. This can still bounce bridge through the chalice, which is hugely important. And, yeah, it's also a little bit better against stuff like Delver. So, you know, you bounce it and draw a card. It's, it's fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, this is okay, uh, but I still, like... Oh, uh, the other thing is against Merit Lodge, because this costs two mana, like, if they're going for it on, say, like, turn three, or you only have, like, three mana, you can actually play a Repeal and a Brazen Borrower in one turn. If they if they respond but with uh, trying to, like, you know, um, give it protection from blue, for instance, you can actually respond to it by, like, casting a second bounce spell, which, if you have four Borrowers, it becomes a little bit harder to do that, so... I think a mix of these two is is quite okay in my eyes, so I think I'm, I'll continue to play it like this. But other than that, like, no, I think this was fine. The Conclave was, it wasn't, like, perfect, but it was, it was okay. It did, yeah, I don't know, like, this could be okay as, um, Waterlog Grove, but, like, this is also fine, too. It didn't really hurt anything, I don't think, so. Other than that, like, yeah, Null Rod in the sideboard. This obviously was pretty good against Storm, because uh, they had to waste Abrupt Decay in this. They could not uh, decay the Chalice, because even if they decay Chalice, like, they wouldn't be able to go off anyway, because they absolutely have to have their Lion's Eye Diamond to win. And if you turn off Lion's Eye Diamond, then they're not going to be able to make enough mana to go off. So I think, yeah, the Null Rod definitely did something... Um, we didn't go up against the graveyard decks to see the like these cards, but you know, Force and Venser Vent was very good against the Sneak and Show deck, so that that was definitely relevant, and that's why he's in the sideboard. He's good against like Merit Lodge. He's also good against um, Sneak and Show, and sometimes he's occasionally good against Storm. If they go for like LED, and if if you can keep like the Veil of Summer off the table, then sometimes you can blow out their stupid. Infernal Tutors by bouncing a land to their hand so they don't actually get to tutor their deck for anything. It, you can turn it from Demonic Tutor into literal do-nothing because they 
can only like search for a land. So yeah, Venser I think is fine against the Storm deck. Um, should bring them in. Even if you bounce like a flashback card, like sometimes this will be fine. Like if you can uh, Venser Echo of Aeons from like when they cast it, like that can just be soul crushing to them because they'll have no cards in hand from cracking the LED. And yeah, then they basically have no way of going off at that point. So I think Venser is very good against Storm. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to have him in my sideboard. I don't see him going anywhere. He fixes a lot of holes in the deck. So uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to say about this. We haven't played Mono Blue in a while. So I just wanted to kind of go over it and just touch base to see where we're at with it. I mean, 3-2 is not bad. Uh, it, the Delver match could have easily went in our favor. I think we got a little unlucky versus Death and Taxes, but like... No, that, you know what? That's going to happen. That I don't expect to win that match the majority of the time. Like, it's close, but like, it's not like unwinnable or anything. But it's it's definitely in their favor, I'd say. And it is one where I think blue green has an edge when, and and especially because death and taxes is like a cheaper deck in paper to play a lot of times. I expect to see it more in paper. I mean, in my area, I at least I know a bunch of people that do play it, so I'm. It's hard to play through a tournament and not play against it at least once for me. So blue green definitely looks like the way to go for at least for paper. It's just, but yeah, if you if you only have mono blue for this, that shouldn't stop you. You should still in, enjoy legacy. So, all right, well that's all I have for now. Uh, I am done ranting. Um, yeah, actually, I think this uh, the setup and the screen looks nice. Let me know how you feel about the new frame for this. Um, I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I'll have to rewatch it and see how it looks like with the screen being bigger and everything, but yeah, there's less junk on the screen now, so I just spent some time in, uh, GIMP and just made, like, a cute little banner and, like, a frame to go around the camera here and just, so I don't know, something so it just didn't look boring, so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know what you guys think, uh, probably Wednesday, well, it'll be either be either blue green in legacy or we might play more mono blue in pioneer i'm still not particularly interested in modern right now especially after this weekend like uh oko definitely has his head in the chopping block i think a lot of people are just their patience for that card is just running very very thin so with there's probably going to be a huge public push to like get him axed and yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really feel like I want to spend a lot of time in modern if something, if a shakeup that big is going to happen, especially when he's like, it's like I don't know, the format is a mess, and it's just going to continue to be that way because and I could talk about this fucking forever. Uh, modern, in my opinion, is lacking a lot of the cards, like you know, Force of Will and Legacy here, that keep you know degenerate stupid decks from running all over the place and keep things like that, you know, like Urza from just being totally ridiculous, or or like Tron, like this would be good against that, or like stuff like Wasteland would be nice to keep those decks in check, or even like Swords to Plowshares would be cool. I don't know, I think there's a lot of cards in Legacy that kind of hold the deck, or hold the format in check a little bit better. Like, Death and Taxes has a ton of tools that I think would be great in modern stuff like Council's Judgment and, like, even Palace Jailer would be cool. Yeah, there, there is a bajillion cards, like, that are just very strong answers. You know, Pernicious Deeds, another one that's, like, black-green. I think that card would be absolutely fine. But with that, modern has, like, all of the threats of Legacy, like, the stuff like, you know, it, it has uh, the fast manas, like, Mox Opals, and it's it's playing Urza, and you've got and you have like all the Tron lands, and there's just tons of ways to do really unfair things, and I think it lags behind a little bit in the ways that it can answer them. So yeah, I I don't see modern getting better for a long time unless they start seriously banning a lot of cards in that format, like. Even if you ban, like, Oko, I don't think that's going to fix Modern. I don't think that it's going to put Modern in a place that people are going to be happy about it. I mean, I don't. So I certainly don't have any huge love of it right now. I think Pioneer and Legacy are both way better formats to play, so... <laughs> Coincidentally, I play a lot of Pioneer and Legacy here lately, so... I wonder why. <laughs> but, 
I don't know. We'll see how that turns out. Nikachu seems to think that Oko is like 95% going to get banned in modern. And you know what? I I was kind of with him before, but like, yeah, I think I am definitely leaning closer to that position, especially after this weekend. So yeah, modern is a mess and I am not really interested in touching that right now. Maybe in the future, but I think for the time being, going between Pioneer and Legacy is where my comfort zone is in this. And I don't know. You can let me know what you guys think about it. I'm curious to see what you think is going to happen with Modern or, or what content you would like to see. I'm always down to take suggestions like that. If it's something that's feasible and that I can make happen, I absolutely will. But, yeah, it's a little, some of this stuff, like I, like, I would be interested in playing, like, Is It Merfolk in Modern, but the problem is, like, I don't have a lot of the cards necessary to do so on MTGO. Like, I have them in paper, but that doesn't really help because I need them on MTGO, and they're, like, not cheap to buy them, and I don't really get funding from anybody to do this. This is all out of my pocket, so... You know, if, if there's stuff that it's, like, I can reasonably make happen in here, I, I am totally down to do that, and I always look for your suggestions, but... Yeah, let me let me know how you feel like about modern. What what do you think is gonna happen to it? And definitely like, are you, let me know if you're enjoying legacy or pioneer stuff in this channel. I'm like I said, I I try to take this feedback seriously, so I, I'm always in the comments. So yeah, if you enjoy this, please like and subscribe. Um, I appreciate all the support I see from everybody, and I love talking to you guys. It's fun. So. All right, I, I've definitely rambled for way too long now. I'm going to turn this off and, <laughs> and go to bed. It's after midnight, so that's fine. All right, I will see you guys later this week. Uh, take it easy.